All right, hello guys. Uh, this is Kevin Carr from Ready Set Go Lane. Today I'm going to talk to you about Go modules. So um, Go modules are basically um, a Go Lane's dependency management system. So basically, think about it as a way for uh, Go to um, install other people's uh, packages of code. So instead of having for having you write your own code, um, that might be redundant or waste time. You can use other people's code within this uh, dependency management system. So um, basically all you have to think about as a module is uh, like collecting all these packages within your code base um, and think about it like your normal project structure, um, like the file tree. So I have that right here in blue. So this is might, might be how one of your um, project structures might look like. So um, on the top uh, level you can have the um, three folders, so controllers, data, engine, and the files within them, and also outside in the root directory is uh, main.go. So um, basically, with each one of these packages, um, if you remember kind of uh, Go's uh, um, uh, package semantics, um, each one of these files within uh, these directories, um, they'll be headed um, by uh, the name of that directory uh, more times than not. But you can also specify that as well. So, for example, api.go, service.go, stripe.go, all at the top of the file um, have package controllers. And that same goes for model.go and user.go. Um, those files will have package data at the top of, um, uh, of their files. Um, now, main.go will have the main package. And um, the cool thing about modules is when you set it up, it's going to automatically generate uh, a go.mod file. So, on the left, we just have a simple um, uh, main.go file that prints out um, a string uh, to the terminal. So what we're going to do is initialize um, uh, a Go module within our project. So how you do that is go mod init. And then um, you basically just specify uh, what um, a path you want to reference later uh, within your code. So I'm just going to do github dot ready set golang which is my user ID and I'm just going to call this modules a lesson so you're going to see here that um, a new go.mod file is being made so if I refresh this you'll see it right here so basically um, you have the file of your own module which you can reference uh, later um, uh, in, in certain files and I'm using go 1.3 so you think again uh, back to the dependency manager thing. You can think about it as just a way to um, uh, download and, and utilize other people's code. So it's similar to other dependency managers in other languages. So MP npm for Node, uh, Maven for Java, Cargo for Rust, um, uh, PyPy for Python, and Ruby Gems for Ruby. And like we did um, here, this is just a, um, an easy way to um, initialize. Um, uh, um, you go dot mod file at, at the command line. So uh, you might be asking uh, or want some clarification on what dependency is. So kind of what we hinted at before is a dependency is um, a, a way to um, utilize other people's code um, that might be um, take too long uh, to develop yourself or it just um, redundant work. Um, usually, uh, with this this code, it's been designed, written, tested, debugged. Basically, all the kinks kind of worked out um, on uh, by by other developers. And you basically um, download that code and utilize it, um, or some of its functionality or functions within your own code. So I actually linked below uh, a link to Russ's Cox um, uh, dependency article because he makes some very good points on um, things to avoid. Uh, when your code base um, is relying on these dependencies or packages. So kind of the key, key highlights that he said is um, usually if you're just working on side projects, it's fine. You don't really don't have to do um, any uh, vetting per se on, uh, on the, the packages and dependencies you're using. Uh, but as you get higher and higher with projects, either working on Big and big projects at work, um, you're going to want to take um, uh, 
uh, more measures to make sure that the code you're using is reliable. So one of the key points he made is you wouldn't like trust some random developer um, uh, working uh, or hire them before you knew what they, they could do. Um, so he says, why should you do that with dependencies? So when you don't vet your dependencies, you're basically depending on, on code from some stranger and basically relying that they tested, debugged, wrote, and signed the code without any errors. And he says, as you get higher and higher, and your projects get more and more complex, um, the cost of not verifying these, these package dependencies gets higher and higher. So you might as well um, make sure yourself with these packages, hey, the code's written well, this developer seems to know, um, or she need, seems to know how they're writing the code, they're doing it in a very testable manner, um, they respond to errors well, um, the code looks good. So um, basically just fair warning when you are using um, dependencies to, to write your own projects and, and you say at work. So um, one way to um, uh, traditionally get uh, these dependencies is to use the go get function. So for example, let's say I wanted to um, download the MySQL um, uh, database driver um, for Go. Um, you, you could type in the command line within your project directory, go get um, github.com, uh, go SQL driver, and then specifically MySQL to get that package. Um, but the cool thing is if you actually specify using it, within your code. So let's say I already know off the top of my head um, I want to use the MySQL driver. I can specify that um, within the import statements. One second. Uh, basically, like I was saying, uh, if you already know what package you want to use, you could because you use it frequently, such as using the MySQL uh, and database SQL packages, you can just put them in the import statement. So here I'm using um, just uh, a dummy set of data, but um, if you look down here, once I ran go um, go run main.go, that package not only runs the file, but it changes the go.mod file. So where it was originally the go.mod file just had uh, my specific uh, path I, I wanted to customize up here for uh, my uh, code and the go versioning, um, it now includes uh, the specific um, SQL MySQL driver the package that we used um, in the main.go file. So the cool thing uh, about uh, this go.mod file, you can actually specify um, specific uh, versionings of data. So if you if you don't know semantic versioning, it's basically you have these three numbers with software packages. The first number means uh, major release, middle number means minor release, and the last number means patch. So let's say, for example, we know we want to use um, the specific package 1.4.0. So all I have to do is change it right here, and then do go run main.go again. Go run main.go. And it now it is specifically downloading um, that specific uh, version of, of the file and any uh, dependencies that download has. So what we don't see right here is, um, let's say that you use a dependency um, package. That dependency itself has its own dependencies. So that's one thing you gotta kinda be careful about too, um, is uh, there, there might be some bad config or bad dependency that also affects the, the the code and dependencies that you use. Uh, so actually since we downgraded to a previous ver version of uh, uh, MySQL, you might be asking how do I just download the, to the latest version. So you can actually, I believe, just do um, 
go get this specific path go get and if you don't specify a specific version with this go get statement it's gonna basically just update to the most recent version so now if we go back we can see that uh, the go uh, MySQL um, SQL driver has reverted back to the most recent version And uh, let's say that you have an unused uh, dependency. Um, first of all, you can uh, list all your dependencies using go list.m all. It will kind of it will list uh, basically the specific uh, packages you're using, and they also have these hash marks because when um, the the system is updating as you're using it, um, it uses these specific. Uh, um, alphanumeric codes uh, to specify the specific instance, basically a snapshot in time version of the dependency you're using. So let's say that you've written this package in code base for a while and you want to get rid of any unused uh, um, packages um, in your go.mod file. You can easily do this at the command line using go mod tidy. So for me, since this is a small package and I'm using both, uh, nothing's been deleted, but you just use that um, if you basically remove. Actually, let's see, for example, let's say I remove the database, and now I just want to go back to a specific um, simple uh, fumpt.print line. Now I just do go run main.go. I think this will clean this one up. If not, we we'll just use go, um, go go mod tidy. So it didn't clean it up. So now all we have to do is do go mod tidy. And you can see that our unused packages have been removed. So first what you gotta do is remove the specific um, points of your quote code that you're using these packages, move them for your import statement, and then use go mod.tidy. So basically those are just kind of uh, s some tips and overall concepts for go.mod uh, go and its file. Um, it's an easier way to um, utilize packages uh, within your um, code base. I've included the links um, in the readme file. Um, so basically uh, the Go blogs uh, using Go modules, uh, Russ Cox's um, our software dependency problem article. Very interesting, uh, very good read and uh, basically um, the second part of that Go Modules blog. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Uh, thank you for listening and hope you have a good day.